heard a lot of talk about change. People crying out for change, although with a lot of disagreement about what kind of change they should be. This is not unusual in times of political, social, and economic struggle. And this was certainly the case throughout biblical history. The people and the prophets often cry out in times of great poverty, oppression, and injustice. Even Jesus' proclamation of the coming kingdom of God is one such cry for an end to the status quo and the beginning of a new order of things. <laughs> In today's reading, God proclaims through the prophet Isaiah that he is about to create a new heavens and a new earth, along with the creation of a joyful Jerusalem. Likewise, in John's vision in the book of Revelation, this hope of a new heaven, a new earth, and a new Jew Jerusalem are reiterated. All of this emphasizes the theme of regeneration, rebirth, new reality that can be found throughout the scripture as well as within most of the world's great religions. In 2 Corinthians and in Galatians 6, Paul declares that in Christ we are a new creation. The interesting thing in Paul is that it is not only humanity that has become new, but the whole of creation, which he says in the 8th chapter of Romans has been subjected to futility, in bondage to decay, and groaning in labor pains. But it was actually the second Isaiah who first suggested this cosmic dimension of change, of a universal transfiguration established in God's power when he speaks of the wolf and the lamb feeding together and the lion eating straw like an ox. When we run across these things in the Bible, we should see them for what they are, the language and the symbols of hope. They express the human yearning for a better reality and the belief in God's ability to bring this new reality into being. Yeah, 
This hope for a renewal of life can be viewed on different levels. For although Paul speaks of the transformation of the whole of creation, he also says that if anyone in Christ, there is a new creation. And I emphasize the word anyone. The hope of rebirth is both cosmic and individual. Paul says that this is brought about by being reconciled to God, in other words, to bridge the gap between creator and creation. We, of course, cannot build that bridge. Only God can. And so he does so in the person of Jesus Christ. Our decision is whether or not we cross the expanse through the realization of faith. By opening our hearts to God in faith, we are met halfway in a holy embrace of compassion and love. This idea is reinforced in Jesus' famous statement to Nicodemus that no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. The phrase born from above speaks of God's initiative in reaching out to both a sinful and hurting humanity in reconciling love. In faith, we respond to that love, and our eyes are open to the presence of the kingdom of God, which is God's power on earth, which seeks to transform and renew all things out of the wellspring of God's bountiful mercy. <laughs> I speak of this transformation out of personal experience, having spent the greater part of my young adulthood as a chronic alcoholic and abuser of drugs, then having God reach into my life, liberating me from the chains of addiction and opening my eyes to the possibility of new life, of being a new creation. <laughs> If you have not yet known the transformative power of God in your own life, I encourage you to open your heart to a new possibility and to experience what is, it truly is to be a new creation.